Hi everyone! Welcome to my cooking channel, Japanese Food at Home. I'm Chef Reina from Japan. In this channel, I'm gonna share with you easy and tasty Japanese food recipes along with pro tips so that everyone can enjoy Japanese food at home. This time, I'm gonna lecture on how to make strawberry mochi. In Japanese, strawberry mochi is called Ichigo Daifuku, which is a small round mochi stuffed with azuki bean paste and whole strawberry. This is one of the most popular seasonal Japanese confections in spring, and also it's my favorite. You may think wrapping strawberries with mochi could be bothersome, but actually, my method doesn't even require dividing the dough into small portions, so you can easily try it at home. First, let's go through the ingredients. To make strawberry mochi, you need strawberries, azuki bean paste, potato starch, shiratamako, sugar, and water. For the azuki bean paste, you can use either red or white type, smooth or mashed type, according to your preference. For the potato starch, cornstarch can be a substitution. For the sugar, johakuto is most commonly used in Japanese home kitchens, but you can substitute this with castor sugar or granulated sugar. The most unfamiliar ingredient to you may be shiratamako, but no worries. I'm going to elaborate on it afterwards. So now, let's start with preparing the bean paste. We are going to rub strawberries with it, but if your bean paste seems too moist and soft to handle, you may want to remove excess moisture by microwaving it. Put the paste in a microwave-proof cup, then cover with a paper towel so that it adheres well to the surface. After that, Microwave at 600 watts for a minute. Take it out from the microwave and stir well with a rubber spatula. Then cover with a paper towel again and microwave it for a further 30 to 60 seconds, depending on the condition of the paste. To check the condition, please look at the surface. If the blackish color has faded out and the texture has become airy, the moisture has evaporated in mouth. After stirring well, cover with a paper towel again to prevent it from too drying out and set aside while cooling it. Please note that you can skip this step if your bean paste is not too moist but in a good condition to rub strawberries with. Alright! Next, let's prepare the strawberries. For beginners, medium-sized strawberries are easier to wrap than small or large ones. Please avoid old ones with squashy, wilted flesh, but purchase fresh ones with firm and plump flesh. Hull the strawberries and remove the stem ends with a paring knife. With some types of strawberries, the area around the stem end is hollow. In such a case, you may want to use the heel of the knife to dig the stem end out. If strawberries are out of season, you can try replacing them with other fruits, but personally I think strawberry is the best choice. If you find a better combination, I hope you will let me know. From now, we're going to wrap the strawberries with the bean paste. Divide the paste into six equal portions and roll them into small balls. You don't have to use a scale, just weigh them with your hands to compare them to each other and make some adjustments as needed.
After making the bean paste into small balls, wrap the strawberries. First, put a bean paste ball on the palm of your non-dominant hand. Then, flatten it with your dominant hand using the base of the thumb. Next, slide the bean paste up to the top of the palm and place a strawberry in the center of the paste. Using the thumb of your non-dominant hand, gradually push the paste up along the side of the strawberry. At the same time, hold the tip of the strawberry with your dominant hand and slowly rotate it while wrapping. This is the wrapping method of professional chefs. Please have a go at it and enjoy learning professional techniques. When finishing, leave the pig exposed instead of wrapping it all up so that the final products will look pretty with a hint of red color showing through on the top. Alright, next, let's make the mochi dough. But before that, let me explain about shiratamago. It's a kind of glutinous rice flour and in the form of coarse granules. The flour is made by soaking rice grains in water, then grinding them into a very fine and smooth paste, and pressing and drying the paste before finally crushing into coarse granules. This manufacturing process gives a smooth and elastic texture to the products made with this flour. For Japanese home cooks, shiratamaku is mostly used for glutinous rice dumplings, which are called shiratama in Japanese. But it can be also used for daifuku and many other Japanese confections. In a microwave-proof mixing bowl, add sugar to shiratamaku and mix. Next, pour in half of the water. Please do not add it all at once, otherwise the flour grains can float in water and it's gonna be hard to dissolve. Please note that mashing up the grains sufficiently at this point is the key to a smooth mochi dough. This process requires you to work hard, so you may want to place a no-slip mat or a wet towel under the bowl to prevent it from moving around. When the dough becomes a smooth paste, add the rest of the water in two additions. Then gradually dilute the paste into a liquid. Before you finish, please do not forget to clean up the side of the bowl using the spatula. After that, cover with cling film and then microwave it at 600 watts for 2 minutes. Take out the bowl from the microwave and check the condition of the dough. Can you see the whitish liquid still remaining? This indicates that it's not fully cooked yet. That means it needs further cooking. Stir well until the entire dough has an even texture. Then cover with the film again 
and microwave for a further 30 seconds. After the second microwaving, stir well again so that the entire dough has a consistent texture. When the dough is cooked, it should have a somewhat translucent color and a sticky, elastic texture. If it's difficult for you to judge the doughness by the appearance and the texture, try tasting a little of the dough. If you find it powdery, it needs further cooking, so microwave again for a further 30 seconds. If your dough tastes good, it's ready to go. From now, we're gonna wrap the bean paste and strawberries with the mochi dough. As you can see, the dough is very sticky. Therefore, you need to sufficiently dust it with a potato starch so that you can easily work with it. Transfer the dough from the bowl onto the spread starch and sprinkle the starch on top as well. The dough should be hot at this point, so let it cool slightly. It loses liquidity as it cools, so you can keep its proper thickness while wrapping. But if you leave it too long, it dries and gets less stretchy, so please start wrapping as soon as it cools. To work with the dough, don't forget to dust your hands as well. Please note that dusting well is the most important key in this step. If sticky parts remain, your hands will stick to the dough, resulting in rips on the surface of the final products. To wrap a strawberry, hold up the dough with your hands and bring a strawberry underneath with the peak facing up. Then, pinch the dough at the bottom to close the seam and pull it apart. Dust the whole daifuku thoroughly with a starch, then set aside. Repeat this process to wrap all the strawberries with the remaining dough. Actually, there is a way to divide the dough before wrapping, but this method allows you to make strawberry mochi much easier and faster. When all of your strawberries are wrapped in the dough, finish by brushing out excess starch. A silicone brush works, but an authentic brush with real animal hairs works much better. So now, let's cut it in half to see what it looks like inside. The cut size look pretty and very attractive, don't they? The mochi dough gets drier and firmer over time, so for maximum enjoyment, please eat it the same day you make it. Alright! This is how to make strawberry mochi, aka Ichigo Daifuku. I'm very glad to have shared my favorite recipe with you. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and have become more familiar with the Japanese food than before. 
I'm planning to share more and more recipes for authentic Japanese food. So if you like this, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you for taking the time to watch. Have a great day with delicious food. See you next time.